Hey, what's up everyone? I'm doing this video because it's extremely urgent to tell you what you need to do to benefit the most from the Ethereum merge. The other day, I made this video over here talking about the Ethereum merge, and I basically said that if you have Ether on an exchange, and if your exchange is not supporting the Ethereum merge, you might not receive the free airdrop Technically, it's not an airdrop, but you will not receive the free ETHW. Now, there are more things that I need to tell you about this fork and about ETHW or ETHPOW, but there are very important things I need to tell you about it, and I want to give you additional information so that you can do an informed decision on whether you want to keep this ETHW or you want to sell it straight away. Okay, guys, the first thing that I want to talk about is what happened after the other forks that we had on Ethereum and Bitcoin. What happened in terms of price action? And is it worth for you to keep this ETHW or are, is everyone just simply going to dump it? So the first one that I wanted to talk about is the uh, only, pretty much only Ethereum hard fork that we had in the past that split the chain into two. And if we switch here to all, you can see that at the very beginning when Ethereum Classic was created, it was trading at $1 something or $2. And while Ether was at, so this was, so this was August 2016 and August 2016, Ether was trading at $11, meaning that Ethereum Classic was maybe 20% of the value of Ethereum. And I want to show you also other forks. So what happened with Bitcoin Cash? Bitcoin Cash, I think we can say that somehow was a successful fork because it started to trade at $400. I remember back then this was huge for people that had a lot of bitcoin people some people made a lot of money with this bitcoin cash hard fork but there was indeed a lot of support in the community for bitcoin cash so if you had one bitcoin you'll receive one free bitcoin cash which at the beginning was around 200 uh, 300 400 dollars and it went up all the way up to f or almost four thousand dollars which is absolutely nuts and people that sold here at the top made a shit ton of money. Anyway, in the meantime, it dropped, but it continues to have some popularity nowadays. And nowadays it's at $124. Now let's look at other forks, because not all these forks were as successful as Bitcoin Cash. So let's look at Bitcoin Diamond. Bitcoin Diamond, if we look like the price totally dumped after uh, the fork, so it was the beginning for $94 and it went all the way down to currently 17 cents. Have Bitcoin Gold. Let's, let's take a look at Bitcoin Gold. Kind of same story. It started 140 something. It seems that it went up to $400 and now it's $25. Bitcoin God. Bitcoin God was uh, also supported by the guy that is supporting now ETHW, Chandler. And Bitcoin Gods went from 138 to uh, $1.81 nowadays. So it totally dumps. Bitcoin SV, Bitcoin SV is actually a fork of Bitcoin Cash, so it's a fork of the fork of the fork. The price remained pretty much like flat and then had some spikes. Then you have Super Bitcoin. There are so many Bitcoin forks, right? Super Bitcoin went from like $250 to currently 54 cents. Bitcoin X, I guess you didn't know there were some more, so many Bitcoin forks. It went from 0 0.08 cents to currently 0 0.00027 cents. United Bitcoin, United Bitcoin went from 400 something dollars to currently $1, as you can see here which takes us to its POW or its W. So currently the IOUs for its POW or its W are trading at $45, meaning that kind of the market expects that its POW or its W is going to be worth around $45, which 
considering considering the current Ethereum price is what two three percent. Let me do a quick calculation. So forty five dollars dividing by six five seven is like two point seven percent. So ETHW is going to be worth around 2.7% of what Ethereum is worth now. So it's not like a huge deal, right? I don't know. I don't think it's really worth to go and buy a ton of ETH before the merge just to have like 2.7%. I mean, 2.7% is like Ethereum is every day moving like up and down 2.7%. So I don't think it's like a huge deal. You know, when when we had the Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash fork, Bitcoin Cash was worth like 10% at the very beginning, 10% of what one Bitcoin was, right? So like Bitcoin was like $4,000, one Bitcoin Cash was $400. Okay, I'll buy some Bitcoin to get free Bitcoin Cash, but are you going to buy ETH to get ETH W or ETH POW? I don't know, I don't know. But anyway, if you already have ETH, there are a few things that you can do to maximize the ETH power or ETH that you are going to receive. And by the way, you should also follow Chandler Guo and follow the ETH POW or ETH W official Twitter because they will be posting news. I was just reading it and they have, for example, already launched a testnet. How cool is that? So I don't know, but you may want to do a couple of things ahead of the merge. And one of the things that I said on a previous video was move your ETH to a cold storage or to your own wallet where you control the private keys because some exchanges may not support the hard fork. Probably the, the biggest exchanges are going to support it, but Binance, for example, didn't announce yet if they are going to support ETHW or not. Meaning that if they don't support and if you have ETH there, then you don't receive the ETHW. But if you have it in your own wallet where you control private keys, for sure you will, you will have it, okay? So personally, I've moved all my ETH to my ledger and I'm just going to wait and see. The second thing that you need to know in order to benefit from ETHW is if you have ETH that you have bridged to other chains like L2s or to Binance Smart Chain or to Polygon, and you have the WETH, the wrapped ETH, then you need to unwrap it. You need it to bring it back to the Ethereum blockchain. Because if you have ETH bridged to Binance Smart Chain or to Polygon, that bridged ETH will not receive anything, okay? So you need to bridge it back to Ethereum and uh, keep it in your own wallet. Okay, another thing that I've been hearing other people saying that you should do to benefit from the ETHW airdrop is to remove your ETH from DeFi protocols if you are doing uh, like LP liquidity providing, okay? So if you are providing liquidity to a pool, to a DEX, or to a lending market like Aave and Compound, if you want to receive more ETHW, you should unstake your ETH and you have it and have it just in your wallet, right? Because if you if you lend your ETH, for example, to Aave, you are not going to receive this ETHW. However, I was just checking the Aave market and let me just share it here with you. I was just checking here. You can come to Aave, click markets and uh, select the Ethereum market on V2, okay? And if you scroll down, you can see where it is here. Uh, let me just remove myself from here. You can see over here that at the moment, the, the supply APY that you see here is 10%. So to be honest, between unstaking your ETH, removing your ETH from the ZFI protocols or leaving, in, leaving it there, and keeping the 10%, maybe it's worth just to leave it there because maybe at the end you receive more rewards from just continuing staking your ETH or doing liquidity providing on these DeFi protocols instead of removing it because 
Now the APY on Aave for ETH is 10%, likely is going to go up more until the merge. And so maybe you just leave it. I mean, what do you think is going to give you more money? Is it going to be receiving the free ETHW or just keep leave it staking, you know, on Aave or some kind of these DeFi protocols that are paying like 10% on ETH? Look at this, like, look at this chart. Like they used, they used to pay under 1% on ETH or 2% and now it's like 10%. Well, maybe just leave it there, you know? And this is also making the ETH loans to get very expensive. So in this column here, oh, let me remove myself again, maybe to this side. <laughs> so this column here that you see here is the borrow APY. So what you pay to borrow ETH. Uh, or these assets. And if you scroll down all the way to ETH, the borrow APY is 27%. So I was actually thinking like, I just have like some USDC on the side and I could give my USDC as a collateral and get an ETH loan just to benefit from the ETHW uh, airdrop. But to get the loan, I'm going to pay an APY of 27%. Nah, for me, it's just, I don't think it makes sense, you know? So let me know what's your strategy. What are you doing with your ETH? If you have ETH bridged to your cha other chains, are you going to bridge it back to the Ethereum chain? If you have it staked in some kind of lending protocol or DEX, are you unstaking it or not? And what are you going to do with your ETHW? Are you going to sell it or just wait and see and see what's going to happen with the price? All right, guys, if you find this video useful, give it a like and subscribe. It will really help. I just wanted to get this out of my chest because I'm so excited about the Ethereum merge that is coming in mid-September and there is so much going on. I just wanted to record this video. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow.